The Swift Programming Language 5.6 Edition, book copyrighted by Apple and made available under a Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License. Protocols. A protocol defines a blueprint of methods, properties, and other requirements that suit a particular task or piece of functionality. The protocol can then be adopted by a class, structure, or enumeration to provide an actual implementation of those requirements. Any type that satisfies the requirements of a protocol is said to conform to that protocol. In addition to specifying requirements that conforming types must implement, you can extend a protocol to implement some of these requirements or to implement additional functionality that conforming types can take advantage of. Protocol Syntax You define protocols in a very similar way to classes, structures, and enumerations. Custom types state that they adopt a particular protocol by placing the protocol's name after the type's name, separated by a colon, as part of their definition. Multiple protocols can be listed and are separated by commas. If a class has a superclass, list the superclass name before any protocols it adopts, followed by a comma. Property Requirements a protocol can require any conforming type to provide an instance property or type property with a particular name and type. The protocol does not specify whether the property should be a stored property or a computed property. It only specifies the required property name and type. The protocol also specifies whether each property must be gettable or gettable and settable. If a protocol requires a property to be gettable and settable, that property requirement cannot be fulfilled by a constant stored property or a read-only computed property. If the protocol only requires a property to be gettable, the requirement can be satisfied by any kind of property, and it is valid for the property to be also settable if this is useful for your own code. Property requirements are always declared as variable properties, prefixed with the var keyword. Gettable and settable properties are indicated by writing get and set after their type declaration, and gettable properties are indicated by writing get inside curly braces. Always prefix type property requirements with the static keyword when you define them in a protocol. This rule pertains even though type property requirements can be prefixed with the class or static keyword when implemented by a class. Here is an example of a protocol with a single instance property requirement. The fully named protocol requires a conforming type to provide a fully qualified name. The protocol does not specify anything else about the nature of the conforming type. It only specifies that the type must be able to provide a full name for itself. The protocol states that any fully named type must have a gettable instance property called full name, which is of type string. Here is an example of a simple structure that adopts and conforms to the fully named protocol. This example defines a structure called person, which represents a specific named person. It states that it adopts the fully named protocol as part of the first line of its definition. Each instance of person has a single stored property called full name, which is of type string. This matches the single requirement of the fully named protocol and means that person has correctly conformed to the protocol. Swift reports an error at compile time if a protocol requirement is not fulfilled. There is a more complex class which also adopts and conforms to the fully named protocol. This class implements the full name property requirement as a computed read-only property for a Starship. Each Starship class instance stores a mandatory name and an optional prefix. The full name property uses the prefix value if it exists and prepends it to the beginning of name to create a full name for the Starship. Method requirements. Protocols can require specific instance methods and type methods to be implemented by conforming types. These methods are written as part of the protocol's definition in exactly the same way as for normal instance and type methods, but without curly braces or a method body. Variadic parameters are allowed, subject to the same rules as for normal methods. Default values, however, cannot be specified for method parameters within a protocol's definition. As with type property requirements, you always prefix type method requirements with the static keyword when they are defined in a protocol. This is true even though type method requirements are prefixed with the class or static keyword when implemented by a class. This example defines a protocol with a single instance method requirement. 
This protocol, random number generator, requires any conforming type to have an instance method called random, which returns a double value whenever it is called. Although it is not specified as part of the protocol, it is assumed that this value will be a number from 0.0, .0 up to, but not including, 1.0. The random number generator protocol does not make any assumptions about how each random number will be generated. It simply requires the generator to provide a standard way to generate a new random number. Here is an implementation of a class that adopts and conforms to the random number generator protocol. This class implements a pseudo random number generator algorithm known as a linear congruential generator. Mutating method requirements. It is sometimes necessary for a method to modify or mutate the instance it belongs to. For instance, methods on value types, that is, structures and enumerations, you place the mutating keyword before a method's func keyword to indicate that the method is allowed to modify the instance it belongs to and any properties of that instance. This process is described in modifying value types from within instance methods. If you define a protocol instance method requirement that is intended to mutate instances of any type that adopts the protocol, mark the method with the mutating keyword as part of the protocol's definition. This enables structures and enumerations to adopt the protocol and satisfy that method requirement. Note, if you mark a protocol instance method requirement as mutating, you do not need to write the mutating keyword when writing an implementation of that method for a class. The mutating keyword is only used by structures and enumerations. This example defines a protocol called toggleable, which defines a single instance method requirement called toggle. As its name suggests, the toggle method is intended to toggle or invert the state of any conforming type, typically by modifying a property of that type. The toggle method is marked with the mutating keyword as part of the toggleable protocol definition to indicate that the method is expected to mutate the state of a conforming instance when it is called. If you implement the toggleable protocol for a structure or enumeration, that structure or enumeration can conform to the protocol by providing an implementation of the toggle method that is also marked as mutating. This example defines an enumeration called on-off switch. This enumeration toggles between two states indicated by the enumeration cases on and off. The enumeration's toggle implementation is marked as mutating to match the toggleable protocol's requirements. Initializer requirements. Protocols can require specific initializers to be implemented by conforming types. You write these initializers as part of the protocol's definition in exactly the same way as for normal initializers, but without the curly braces or an, an initializer body. Class Implementations of Protocol Initializer Requirements You can implement a protocol initializer requirement on a conforming class as either a designated initializer or a convenience initializer. In both cases, you must mark the initializer implementation with the required modifier. The use of the required modifier ensures that you provide an explicit or inherited implementation of the initializer requirement on all subclasses of the conforming class such that they also conform to the protocol. For more information on required initializers, see Required Initializers. Note, you do not need to mark protocol initializer re-implementations with the required modifier on classes that are marked with the final modifier, because final classes cannot be subclassed. For more about the final modifier, see Preventing Overrides. If a subclass overrides a designated initializer from a superclass and also implements a matching initializer requirement from a protocol, mark the initializer implementation with both the required and override modifiers. Failable initializer requirements. Protocols can define failable initializer requirements for conforming types as defined in failable initializers. A failable initializer requirement can be satisfied by a failable or non-failable initializer on a conforming type. A non-failable initializer requirement can be satisfied by a non-failable initializer or an implicitly unwrapped failable initializer. Protocols as types. Protocols do not actually implement any functionality themselves. Nonetheless, you can use protocols as a fully-fledged type in your code. Using a protocol as a type is sometimes called an existential type, which comes from the phrase, there exists a type T such that T conforms to the protocol. 
You can use a protocol in many places where other types are allowed, including as a parameter type or return type in a function, method, or initializer, as the type of a constant, variable, or property, as the type of items in an array, dictionary, or other container. Note, because protocols are types, use upper camel case for their names. Here's an example of a protocol used as a type. This example defines a new class called dice, which represents an n-sided dice for use in a board game. Dice instances have an integer property called sides, which represents how many sides they have, and a property called generator, which provides a random number generator from which to create dice roll values. The generator property is of type random number generator. Therefore, you can set it to an instance of any type that adopts the random number generator protocol. Nothing else is required of the instance you assign to this property, except that the instance must adopt the random number generator protocol. Because its type is random number generator, code inside the dice class can only interact with generator in ways that apply to all generators that conform to the protocol. That means it cannot use any methods or properties that are defined by the underlying type of the generator. However, you can downcast from a protocol type to an underlying type in the same way you can downcast from a superclass to a subclass, as discussed in downcasting. Dice also has an initializer to set up its initial state. This initializer has a parameter called generator, which is also of type random number generator. You can pass a value of any conforming type into this parameter when initializing a new dice instance. Dice also provides one instance method, roll, which returns an integer value between one and the number of sides on the dice. This method calls the generator's random method to create a new random number between 0.0, .0 and 1.0 and uses this random number to create a dice roll value within the correct range. Because generator is known to adopt random number generator, it is guaranteed to have a random method to call. Here's how the dice class can be used to create a six-sided die with a linear congruential generator instance as its random number generator. Delegation is a design pattern that enables a class or structure to hand off or delegate some of its responsibilities to an instance of another type. This design pattern is implemented by defining a protocol that encapsulates the delegated responsibilities such that a conforming type known as a delegate is guaranteed to provide the functionality that has been delegated. Delegation can be used to respond to a particular action or to retrieve data from an external source without needing to know the underlying type of that source. This example defines two protocols for use with dice-based board games. The dice game protocol is a protocol that can be adopted by any game that involves dice. The dice game delegate protocol can be adopted to track the progress of a dice game. To prevent strong reference cycles, delegates are declared as weak references. For information about weak references, see strong reference cycles between class instances. Marking the protocol as class only lets the snake and ladders class later in this chapter declare that its delegate must use a weak reference. A class only protocol is marked in its inheritance from any object as discussed in class only protocols. Here is a version of the Snakes and Ladders game originally introduced in Control Flow. This version is adapted to use a dice instance for its dice rolls, to adopt the dice game protocol, and to notify a dice game delegate about its progress. For a description of the Snakes and Ladders gameplay, see Break. This version of the game is wrapped up as a class called Snakes and Ladders, which adopts the dice game protocol. It provides a gettable dice property and a play method in order to conform to the protocol. The dice property is declared as a constant property because it does not need to change after initialization and the protocol only requires that it must be gettable. The snakes and ladders game board setup takes place within the class's init initializer. All game logic is moved into the protocol's play method, which uses the protocol's required dice property to provide its dice roll values. Note that the delegate property is defined as an optional dice game delegate because a delegate is not required in order to play the game. Because it is of an optional type, the delegate property is automatically set to an initial value of nil. Thereafter, the game instantiator has the option to set the property to a suitable delegate. Because the dice game delegate protocol is class only, you can declare the delegate to be weak to prevent reference cycles. Dice game delegate provides three methods for tracking the progress of a game. 
These three methods have been incorporated into the game logic within the play method above and are called when a new game starts, a new turn begins, or the game ends. Because the delegate property is an optional dice game delegate, the play method uses optional chaining each time it calls a method on the delegate. If the delegate property is nil, these delegate calls fail gracefully and without error. If the delegate property is non-nil, the delegate methods are called and are passed the snakes and ladders instance as a parameter. This next example shows a class called Dice Game Tracker, which adopts the Dice Game Delegate protocol. Dice Game Tracker implements all three methods required by Dice Game Delegate. It uses these methods to keep track of the number of turns a game has taken. It resets a number of turns property to zero when the game starts, increments it each time a new turn begins, and prints out the total number of turns once the game has ended. The implementation of game did start uses the game parameter to print some introductory information about the game that is about to be played. The game parameter has a type of dice game, not snakes and ladders, and so game did start can access and use only methods and properties that are implemented as part of the dice game protocol. However, the method is still able to use typecasting to query the type of the underlying instance. In this example, it checks whether game is actually an instance of snakes and ladders behind the scenes and prints an appropriate message if so. The game did start method also accesses the dice property of the past game parameter. Because game is known to conform to the dice game protocol, it is guaranteed to have a dice property, and so the game did start method is able to access and print this dice's sides property, regardless of what type of game is being played. Here's how Dice Game Tracker looks in action. Adding protocol conformance with an extension. You can extend an existing type to adopt and conform to a new protocol, even if you do not have access to the source code for the existing type. Extensions can add new properties, methods, and subscripts to an existing type and are therefore able to add any requirements that a protocol may demand. For more about extensions, see Extensions. Note, existing instances of a type automatically adopt and conform to a protocol when that conformance is added to the instance's type in an extension. For example, this protocol, called Text Representable, can be implemented by any type that has a way to be represented as text. This might be a description of itself or a text version of its current state. The dice class from above can be extended to adopt and conform to text representable. This extension adopts the new protocol in exactly the same way as if dice had provided it in its original implementation. The protocol name is provided after the type name separated by a colon and an implementation of all requirements of the protocol is provided within the extension's curly braces. Any dice instance can now be treated as text representable. Similarly, the Snakes and Ladders game class can be extended to adopt and conform to the text representable protocol. Conditionally conforming to a protocol. A generic type may be able to satisfy the requirements of a protocol only under certain conditions, such as when the type's generic parameter conforms to the protocol. You can make a generic type conditionally conform to a protocol by listing constraints when extending the type. Write these constraints after the name of the protocol you're adopting by writing a generic WHERE clause. For more about generic WHERE clauses, see Generic WHERE clauses. This extension makes array instances conform to the text representable protocol whenever they store elements of a type that conforms to text representable. Declaring protocol adoption with an extension. If a type already conforms to all of the requirements of a protocol, but has not yet stated that it adopts the protocol, you can make it adopt the protocol with an empty extension. Instances of hamster can now be used wherever text representable is the required type. Note, types do not automatically adopt a protocol just by satisfying its requirements. They must always explicitly declare their adoption of the protocol. Adopting a protocol using a synthesized implementation. Swift can automatically provide the protocol conformance for equatable, hashable, and comparable in many simple cases. Using the synthesized implementation means you do not have to write repetitive boilerplate code to implement the protocol requirements yourself. Swift provides a synthesized implementation of equatable for the following kinds of custom types structures that have only stored properties that conform to the equatable protocol, enumerations that have only associated types that conform to the equatable protocol, 
and enumerations that have no associated types. To receive a synthesized implementation of the equal equal operator, declare conformance to equatable in the file that contains the original declaration without implementing an equal equal operator yourself. The equatable protocol provides a default implementation of not equal. This example defines a vector 3D structure for a three-dimensional position vector similar to the vector 2D structure. Because the X, Y, and Z properties are all of an equatable type, the vector 3D re receives synthesized implementations of the equivalence operators. Swift provides a synthesized implementation of Hashable for the following kinds of custom types. Structures that have only stored properties that conform to the Hashable protocol. Enumerations that have only associated types that conform to the Hashable protocol. And enumerations that have no associated types. To receive a synthesized implementation of hash into, declare conformance to Hashable in the file that contains the original declaration without implementing a hash into method yourself. Swift provides a synthesized implementation of comparable for enumerations that do not have a raw value. If the enumeration has associated types, they must all conform to the comparable protocol. To receive a synthesized implementation of less than, declare conformance to comparable in the file that contains the original enumeration declaration without implementing a less than operator yourself. The comparable protocol's default implementation of less than or equal to, greater than, and greater than or equal to provides the remaining comparison operators. This example defines a skill level enumeration with cases for beginners, intermediates, and experts. Experts are additionally ranked by the number of stars they have. Collections of protocol types. A protocol can be used as the type to be stored in a collection such as an array or a dictionary as mentioned in protocols as types. This example creates an array of text representable things. It is now possible to iterate over the items in the array and print each item's textual description. Note that the thing constant is of type text representable. It is not of type dice or dice game or hamster, even if the actual instance behind the scenes is one of those types. Nonetheless, because it is of type text representable and anything that's text representable is known to have a textual description property, it is safe to access thing.textual description each time through the loop. Protocol inheritance. A protocol can inherit one or more other protocols and can add further requirements on top of the requirements it inherits. The syntax for protocol inheritance is similar to the syntax for class inheritance, but with the option to list multiple inherited protocols separated by commas. Here is an example of a protocol that inherits the text representable protocol from prior. This example defines a new protocol, pretty text re representable, which inherits the text representable. Anything that adopts pretty text representable must satisfy all of the requirements enforced by text representable plus the additional requirements enforced by pretty text representable. In this case, pretty text representable adds a single requirement to provide a gettable property called pretty textual description that returns a string. The snakes and ladders class can be extended to adopt and conform to pretty text representable. This extension states that it adopts the pretty text representable protocol and provides an implementation of the pretty textual description property for the snakes and ladders types. Anything that is pretty text representable must also be text representable, and so the implementation of pretty textual description starts by accessing the textual description property from the text representable protocol to begin an output string. It appends a colon and a line break and uses this as the start of its pretty text representation. It then iterates through the array of board squares and appends a geometric shape to represent the contents of each square. If the square's value is greater than zero, it is the base of a ladder and is represented by an upwards triangle. If the square's value is less than zero, it is the head of the snake and is represented by a downward pointing triangle. Otherwise, the square's value is zero and it is a free square represented by a zero. The pretty textual description property can now be used to print a pretty text description of any snakes and ladders instance. Class only protocols. You can limit protocol adoption to class types and not structures or enumerations by adding the any object protocol to a protocol's inheritance list. In this example, some class only protocol can only be adopted by class types. 
it is a compile time error to write a structure or enumeration definition that tries to adopt some class only protocol. Note, use a class only protocol when the behavior defined by that protocol's requirements assumes or requires that a conforming type has reference semantics rather than value semantics. For more about reference and value semantics, see structures and enumerations are value types and classes are reference types. Protocol composition. It can be useful to require a type to conform to multiple protocols at the same time. You can combine multiple protocols into a single requirement with a protocol composition. Protocol compositions behave as if you defined a temporary local protocol that has the combined requirements of all protocols in the composition. Protocol compositions do not define any new protocol types. Protocol compositions have the form some protocol and another protocol. You can list as many protocols as you need, separating them with ampersands. In addition to its list of protocols, a protocol composition can also contain one class type, which you can use to specify a required superclass. Here is an example that combines two protocols called named and aged into a single protocol composition requirement on a function parameter. In this example, the named protocol has a single requirement for a gettable string property called name. The aged protocol has a single requirement for a gettable int property called age. Both protocols are adopted by a structure called person. The example also defines a wish happy birthday to function. The type of the celebrator parameter is named and aged, which means any type that conforms to both the named and aged protocols. It does not matter which specific type is passed to the function as long as it conforms to both of the required protocols. The example then creates a new person instance called birthday person and passes this new birthday person to the wish happy birthday function. Because person conforms to both protocols, this call is valid and the wish happy birthday to function can print its birthday greeting. Here's an example that combines the named protocol from the previous example with a location class. The begin concert in function takes a parameter of type location and named, which means any type that is a subclass of location and that conforms to the named protocol. In this case, city satisfies both requirements. Passing birthday person to the begin concert in function is invalid because person is not a subclass of location. Likewise, if you made a subclass of location that did not conform to the named protocol, calling begin concert in with an instance of that type is also invalid. Checking for protocol conformance. You can use the is and as operators described in typecasting to check for protocol conformance and to cast to a specific protocol. Checking for and casting to a protocol follows exactly the same syntax as checking for and casting to a type. The is operator returns true if an instance conforms to a protocol and returns false if it does not. The as with question mark version of the downcast operator returns an optional value of the protocol's type, and this value is nil if the instance does not conform to that protocol. The as with exclamation mark version of the downcast operator forces the downcast to the protocol type and triggers a runtime error if the downcast does not succeed. This example defines a protocol called has area with a single property requirement of a gettable double property called area. Here are two classes, circle and country, both of which conform to the has area protocol. The circle class implements the area property requirement as a computed property based on a stored radius property. The country class implements the area requirement directly as a stored property. Both classes correctly conform to the has area protocol. Here is a class called animal, which does not conform to the has area protocol. The circle, country, and animal classes do not have a shared base class. Nonetheless, they are all classes, and so instances of all three types can be used to initialize an array that stores value of type any object. The objects array is initialized with an array literal containing a circle instance with a radius of two units, a country instance initialized with the surface area of the United Kingdom in square kilometers, and an animal instance with four legs. The objects array can now be iterated, and each object in the array can be checked to see if it conforms to the has area protocol. 
Whenever an object in the array conforms to the has area protocol, the optional value returned by the as with question mark operator is unwrapped with optional binding into a constant called object with area. The object with area constant is known to be of a type has area, and so its area property can be accessed and printed in a type safe way. Note that the underlying objects are not changed by the casting process. They continue to be a circle, a country, and an animal. However, at the point that they are stored in the object with area constant, they are only known to be of type has area, and so only their area property can be accessed. Optional protocol requirements. You can define optional requirements for protocols. These requirements do not have to be implemented by types that conform to the protocol. Optional requirements are prefixed by the optional modifier as part of the protocol's definition. Optional requirements are available so that you can write code that interoperates with Objective-C. Both the protocol and the optional requirement must be marked with the at OBJC. Note that at Objective-C protocols can be adopted only by classes that inherit from Objective-C classes or other at Objective-C classes. They cannot be adopted by structures or enumerations. When you use a method or property in an optional requirement, its type automatically becomes an optional. For example, a method of type int returning string becomes optional int returning string. Note that the entire function type is wrapped in the optional, not the method's return value. An optional protocol requirement can be called with optional chaining to account for the possibility that the requirement was not implemented by a type that conforms to the protocol. You check for an implementation of an optional method by writing a question mark after the name of the method when it is called, such as some optional method question mark some argument. For more information on optional chaining, see optional chaining. This example defines an integer counting class called counter, which uses an external data source to provide its increment amount. This data source is defined by the counter data source protocol, which has two optional requirements. The counter data source protocol defines an optional method requirement called increment for count and an optional property requirement called fixed increment. These requirements define two different ways for data sources to provide an appropriate increment amount for a counter instance. Note, strictly speaking, you can write a custom class that conforms to counter data source without implementing either protocol requirement. They are both optional after all. Although technically allowed, this would not make for a very good data source. The counter class, defined here, has an optional data source property of type counter data source, or optional counter data source. The counter class stores its current value in a variable property called count. The counter class also defines a method called increment, which increments the count property every time the method is called. The increment method first tries to retrieve an increment amount by looking for an implementation of the increment for count method on its data source. The increment method uses optional chaining to try to call increment for count and passes the current count value as the method's single argument. Note that two levels of optional chaining are at play for here. First, it is possible that data source may be nil, and so data source has a question mark after its name to indicate that in increment for count should be called only if data source is not nil. Second, even if data source does exist, there is no guarantee that it implements increment for count because it's an optional requirement. Here, the possibility that increment for count might not be implemented is also handled by optional chaining. The call to increment for count happens only if increment for count exists, that is, if it is not nil. This is why increment for count is also written with a question mark after its name. Because the call to increment for count can fail for either of these two reasons, the call returns an optional int value. This is true even though increment for count is defined as returning a non-optional int value in the definition of counter data source. Even though there are two optional chaining operations, one after another, the result is still wrapped in a single optional. For more information about using multiple optional chaining operations, see linking multiple levels of chaining. After calling increment for count, the optional int that it re returns is unwrapped into a constant called amount using optional binding. If the optional int does contain a value, that is, if the delegate and method both exist, then the method returned a value, the unwrapped amount is added onto the stored count property, and the incrementation is complete. 
If it is not possible to retrieve a value from the increment for count method, either because data source is nil or because the data source does not implement increment for count, then the increment method tries to retrieve a value from the data source's fixed increment property instead. The fixed increment property is also an optional requirement, so its value is an optional int value, even though fixed increment is defined as a non-optional int property as part of the counter data source protocol definition. Here is a simple counter data source implementation where the data source returns a constant value of 3 every time it is queried. It does this by implementing the optional fixed increment property requirement. You can use an instance of 3 source as the data source for a new counter instance. The code above creates a new counter instance, sets its data source to be a 3 source instance, and calls the counter's increment method 4 times. As expected, the counter's count property increases by 3 each time increment is called. Here is a more complex data source called towards zero source, which makes a counter instance count up or down towards zero from its current count value. The towards zero source class implements the optional increment for count method from the counter data source protocol and uses the count argument value to work out which direction to count in. If count is already zero, the method returns zero to indicate that no further counting should take place. You can use an instance of towards zero source with the existing counter instance to count from negative four to zero. Once the counter reaches zero, no more counting takes place. Protocol extensions. Protocols can be extended to provide method, initializer, subscript, and computed property implementations to conforming types. This allows you to define behavior on protocols themselves rather than in each type's individual conformance or in a global function. For example, the random number generator protocol can be extended to provide a random bool method, which uses the result of the required random method to return a random bool value. By creating an extension of the, on the protocol, all conforming types automatically gain this method implementation without any additional modification. Protocol extensions can add implementations to conforming types, but cannot make a protocol extend or inherit from another protocol. Protocol inheritance is always specified in the protocol declaration itself. Providing default implementations. You can use protocol extensions to provide a default implementation to any method or computed property requirement of that protocol. If a conforming type provides its own implementation of a required method or property, that implementation will be used instead of the one provided by the extension. Note, protocol requirements with default implementations provided by extensions are distinct from optional protocol requirements. Although conforming types do not have to provide their own implementation of either, requirements with default implementations can be called without optional chaining. For example, the pretty text representable protocol, which inherits the text representable protocol, can provide a default implementation of its required pretty textual description property to simply return the result of accessing the textual description property. Adding constraints to protocol extensions. When you define a protocol extension, you can specify constraints that conforming types must satisfy before the methods and properties of the extension are available. You write these constraints after the name of the protocol you are extending by writing a generic WHERE clause. For more about generic WHERE clauses, see generic WHERE clauses. For example, you can define an extension to the collection protocol that applies to any collection whose elements conform to the equatable protocol, a part of the standard library. You can use the equal equal and not equal operators to check for equality and inequality between two elements. The all equal method returns true only if all the elements in the collection are equal. Consider two arrays of integers, one where all the elements are the same and one where they are not. Because arrays conform to collection and integers conform to equatable, equal numbers and different numbers can use the all equal method. Note, if a conforming type satisfies the requirements for multiple constrained extensions that provide implementations for the same method or property, Swift uses the implementation corresponding to the most specialized constraints. 